Thank you, Samantha, for that uh, fantastic uh, introduction. Um, I'm somewhat uh, uh, humbled by your introduction, yes. Uh, I think I came across uh, Samantha way back in late uh, 70s, uh, 78, 79 time, when I used to uh, uh, spend quite a lot of time at the zoo. Uh, having said that, I thought I'll, let's, uh, I must thank the, uh, the, the, the Sri Lanka Nature Conservationist uh, uh, Committee for inviting me to give this uh, uh, talk on uh, bird illustration. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be talking more of uh, ornithological illustrations from a historical pers aspect and perspective as well. Uh, <clears throat> but there's a lot of artistry involved in uh, uh, aesthetics involved in uh, illustrations. Uh, so I'll so I'll go ba uh, back into history. The, the earliest forms probably there's very little uh, from uh, the, the earliest uh, man in caves. Uh, just get technical issues. Okay, so these, uh, what, instead of the, 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 the few, quite a few uh, uh, illustrations from caves which I've found, uh, but I, I probably go to the uh, e Egypt time where, where birds were well illustrated. Uh, overall, the gist uh, was uh, pretty good. And these are from TBs and uh, and uh, uh, Egypt overall. And the one on the left is a, a, a falcon. So probably I think falconry did dicks is during that time, but also aesthetically they valued uh, birds in a different, uh, uh, and animals as well. As you see the baboons at the, in, on the image on the left of the screen. So ducks also played a major role. Uh, they have, apart from the aesthetics uh, of it, they also had a, a spiritual value to birds, which is very important. And I think uh, spiritual birds spiritually uh, goes back a long time, even in Sri Lankan history. If you go go back, uh, you go into the oldest uh, flags depicted chickens, which I'm quite uh, interested in. One of my subjects of interest. Next slide. So the original uh, 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 published forms of birds came in the form of woodcuts. Interestingly, uh, uh, Pierre Godel, of, of course, French, uh, 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 probably pioneered. Maybe b before that, there were others who did, but he pioneered. Uh, Woodcuts and woodcuts eventually uh, became came a progress to uh, wood engravings, which gave far more clarity uh, to the birds, uh, uh, which were, uh, was published eventually. Uh, Jacques Barban in 1810 probably was one of the greatest of artists of that time, also of French origin. Uh, he, did, he did tutor the royalty during that time, that's Napoleon's time. Uh, and uh, he, he was commissioned by Na Napoleon, apparently, uh, for some of the, uh, uh, the paintings which Napoleon had owned in the palace as well. Uh, he did also have, uh, tutor the royalty uh, in France at that time. Uh, some of his these these paintings on the right hand side is where uh, is uh, interestingly these are uh, kill birds mounted with uh, wires and uh, given their postures so these are skins actually uh, illustrated but later on he also did quite a bit of a few uh, illustrations he was uh, he pioneered he did uh, quite a bit of traveling as well 
so I would say in the early uh, uh, 19th century, uh, he was one of the greatest of that time. There were many, but I'm, I'm trying to just uh, focus on those who uh, are important. So now I would go to John James Audubon. Uh, very, very interesting story about him. Uh, he uh, uh, mig uh, migrated from France to uh, the America to the Americas, um, America, and uh, at the age of eighteen, uh, because he didn't want conscription in the in the uh, Napoleon uh, uh, army, so he somehow escaped and he found he knew his talents. Uh, he initially worked at the. Uh, Minnesota Museum, yes, and yes. is there any technical issues? Okay, so he shot his shot the birds obviously uh, so that he could paint his probably we, we everyone would co he considers him to be the godfather of bird illustrations and bird painting, and uh, he did uh, one of the greatest of uh, the. Uh, expeditions was uh, to the Labradors, if I'm right, in, in the eastern coast of America, and not, uh, uh, and uh, he did hell of a lot of illustrations, and uh, uh, he pioneered uh, details and uh, of bird uh, art and bird illustration. Uh, sadly, he at that time. Uh, he wanted to illustrate them life size. So this illustration on the right hand side of the, the, the rosy flamingo is where the, the, the neck and head exceeded the size and he, he, he did this is one of the uh, criticisms of, of his work at that time. So he had to bend them in the, 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 the birds in different forms so that it fits into the paper and uh, he did some fant other books are really fantastic and uh, yeah these are the Carolina par par parrots and uh, he uh, did some really fantastic work as I said yeah so this is basically bird illustration in, in its art form but as you go on you know uh, we I will progress to the bird illustration aspect of it which which uh, is an important, quite important. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, British artists, uh, uh, quite a few of them during that time. Uh, also, uh, I would mention Bruno Liljeffers, uh, Archibald, Archibald Thorburn, uh, uh, then the, the American Francis Lee Jacks, uh, Louis. Uh, Agassiz Futes from the Amer uh, America. Uh, they, they they were more artists than illustrators. Uh, so I'm trying to get to the point where I get into the illustration point, of course. And then I go back uh, to John Gould. Very very interesting story behind him. He did quite a lot of books, uh, and there were he had his own uh, artists who illustrated for him. Uh, if I'm uh, uh, Leard, if I'm right, Leard did uh, quite a bit of work. Interestingly, he uh, did not give credit to the person who did most of his work. Of course, he did guide them, uh, and uh, most of his work was done by his wife uh, Elizabeth uh, Nicoxon, and. It seems that at that time, the authorship got more credit than the artists, uh, said uh, 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 scenario, uh, because most of the work really, the hard work was done by the artists. It's my personal viewpoint. Uh, it is uh, the one, last, uh, the, the uh, illustration on the left is the Himalayan Mona, which he did for, uh, it was at that time also called the Impian uh, uh, Pheasant. And 
the one on the right of uh, the minivats was the possibly the, the only uh, credit uh, Elizabeth got. Uh, so also the other painters got their whatever credit later on. So we come to the real modern day uh, uh, word illustrating who, uh, when it comes to the book form, when it comes to feel identification of birds and uh, Roger Potori Peterson pioneered the present day bird books. Uh, why I'm going into the bird book aspect is that is where we as uh, birders, naturalists, uh, that's where we indulge in when it comes to books. We hardly uh, would go into the art aspect, sadly, but in our part of the world. Uh, so the, the art aspect is uh, uh, something which many of the Ivy League would indulge in. Uh, so, so there's two different sides to the story. So Roger Tory Peterson did uh, pioneer the, the present day bird guide books. And uh, of course, at that time, most of these illustrations were done partly with their field knowledge and most of them were of a uh, uh, museum, uh, uh, from with museum specimens. Yeah, so this is one of the, and he was, of course, an artist. You know, most most, most illustrators, uh, bird illustrators, are artists themselves. So they do uh, get more. Uh, the hardest part of their work is really illustrating for books, which also gives them a lot of uh, 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 credit, and it's more or less sort of a job, a, a, a steady income earner. Uh, whereas when it comes to the paintings, as an artist myself, we know. Uh, it's not easy to sell a painting and uh, you've got to have a reputation. So you get a reputation once you do the uh, field guides and that's the scenario even presently. Now, so Peterson guides, the initial guides had the Peterson technique where you have these uh, uh, markers to identify uh, certain features in different species, which helps you in the field to identify species. And this one on the left is, of course, the woodpeckers. The one on the right are the hummingbirds. Yeah, so this is Roger, Roger's artwork and uh, one of the first birds which he was impressed of was uh, the blue jays. Uh, and uh, and um, uh, it's a uh, story of his childhood, which is very interesting because he was not interested in studies and he was indulging in all kinds of things. And his teacher apparently, I couldn't remember the name, and she's the one who took him out and uh, uh, taught him to appreciate the outdoors and uh, something in that way. And, and he, he took up into bird art and watching birds and illustrating birds. And that's how it happen so it's it's some mentor at some point in your life which makes that radical change which changed the whole lifestyle your your and also helps your well-being uh i'm i'm sure I'm, uh, mr ashish piti is with us uh one of the most erudite indians i've come to know and who's a historian and has done a fantastic uh, bibliography of Indian birds. I'm sure he would know to talk about this uh, on the on the, the Indian birds. This is of Sally Mali and Dylan Ripley's um, handbook to the birds of the Indian South Continent. And these are two, two uh, uh, plates from that. Eventually there was a, another uh, uh, compiled uh, all the 10 or 11 volumes and then it was John Henry Dick, which illustrated, but it was published, but I, I remember some reading somewhere where, where Dylan Ripley did not like the illustrations, but nevertheless, uh, uh, Salim Ali went ahead uh, in publishing the book. 
uh, and it's still probably one of the uh, Bibles of South Asian birding. And uh, the, the many artists who contributed it to it, and uh, just two plates. And we come to the, uh, I, I, I brought this story uh, to our part of the world, which we are familiar with. And this is of uh, uh, the birds of the India subcontinent by uh, uh, Tim and Caroline Skip and Richard Grimmer. And the, uh, the, the owl uh, uh, plate is illustrated by Dan Cole, one of the top artists, a British artist, and the one on the left is of the pigeons by Daniel Cole. And both are, they do their uh, artistic work, painting birds in uh, uh, same with uh, 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 John Cox. And John Cox, I think, did uh, the cover illustration for Deepal Varakavara's book on Sri Lanka with the Serendip Skopsa. Yeah, the one very, very interesting lady, uh, probably one of the uh, uh, greatest women artists of modern times. And this is an illustration from, from uh, 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 Ripley's Guide to Birds of South Asia. And this was done, the, the parakeets are done by uh, Hilary Byrne. Hilary Byrne uh, also did the illustrations for Waterfowl of the World, uh, which is still a book which is uh, probably possibly one of the most valuable books we want to have in their library. Uh, interesting, she lives uh, 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 a secluded lifestyle in uh, the UK and she breeds uh, uh, sheep. Uh, sorry, goats. So uh, I think anglo nubian is the breed, uh, and very interesting. She does some fantastic uh, artwork herself. And uh, the one on the right uh, is uh, the warblers, and uh, I couldn't remember the name of the artist, but uh, he his brother. Uh, bo uh, uh, he and his brother, the brother does most of the butterflies uh, and dragonflies of Europe and they publish quite a bit and the warblers, I think he's probably one of the greatest, the, the uh, great artists, uh, presently living artist. Uh, and in the same way, what comes to my, who comes to my mind is Chris Rose, who will also illustrates the, illustrated the uh, the swift, swift and uh, solos, solos uh, of the world, and uh, solos and martins of the world, Chris Rose, and he paints uh, as well. His his artistry is beyond compare. It's just fantastic to look at his art uh, artwork. I just talk only on the, on the illustrating bit. And he's a fantastic illustrator. Uh, I'm sorry, I've uh, just uh, skipped my mind with the, the, the artists who did the illustrations of the warblers here. Uh, so we come down down to Sri Lanka. Uh, so I'm sorry. So we, as Sri Lanka, we, we would consider uh, the history of the birds of Ceylon by uh, uh, Vincent Leg to be the Bible of our Bible, and uh, there is an interesting story about it. As we go on, I will the next slides will will talk about it, and I've been discussing this. Uh, uh, there is an enigma behind it, and then there uh, there is Manual Birds of Ceylon by Wade. Uh, well, it's not in the league now, but uh, uh, most of them, uh, and now uh, also Cecil Kershaw. Uh, or, or, or Lushington did uh, a series of four books uh, uh, with W.W. Uh, Phillips. 
and uh, so I'll go to those and uh, then the color plates by Vincent uh, by GM Henry is also very very important from a birding bird illustrating uh, point of view and uh, 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 the, the color plates are the more there is more artistry there's more uh, more than the illustrating uh, illustration part of it well, as the guide uh, which we are very familiar with uh, is in a different way uh, so so these are the major work that, uh, which are Lushington did along with uh, the, the bird life of Ceylon but uh, one two three four with uh, Phillips and Phillips had also written uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the the show birds of uh, Sri Lanka or wetland birds of Sri Lanka and uh, yeah, the, the manuscript is with uh, Gihandi S. Vijaratna and was never he was never able to publish it for some reason so so in 1955 the the guide to the birds of Ceylon by Harrison uh, GM uh, uh, GM uh, Henry is what we know in uh, of our times as the uh, field guide and the best book we know but overall I would go to all the time to uh, Vincent Leg uh, when it comes to not the illustration aspect of it but when it comes to for referral referral part uh, aspect of it so then uh, yeah, that, that was in 1955 and there was a long lapse of uh, uh, long lapse when in 1999 when the field guide to the birds of Ceylon which came by John Harrison and also illustrated and illustrated by Tim Warfock which probably one, also one of the best artists uh, of present times. He's also a top on anthropologist who's written a fantastic uh, paper on 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 the the shrikes, the the uh, red back shrike, uh, the brown shrike, and uh, yeah, those two shrike, and and also the Isabellian shrike. It, it's a fantastic paper if you if you wish to go through it. Uh, it's got more, more more photographs and illustrations in it. Yeah, so we we'll get back to Vincent Leg, whom I want to uh, talk about. Now he in uh, in eighteen seventy eight he did uh, a book called uh, Lithograph, uh, uh, known as uh, uh, Birds Peculiar to Sri Lanka, which was the precursor to the uh, his uh, monumental works. Uh, he was born in uh, Tasmania, lived in Britain, and then he was in the uh, uh, Sri Lankan civil service after retirement, uh, headed back to Tasmania. Uh, very interesting character, probably had a massive ego. And uh, I'm talking about this, uh, I'm bringing this whole artistry part of it, the illustrating part of it to Sri Lanka because it's uh, what we are interested in and important for us. John Gerard Kuhleman was the person who did the illustrations for Vincent Lake. He was of Dutch origin, worked at the British Museum and did a lot of uh, illustrating for various artists. Uh, Sadly, most artists of that time did not get sufficient credit, which we at art in our, we would uh, uh, prefer. Uh, so he did a, a lot of illustrating work. He was a very hard worker, uh, and he was initially not well paid, but later on uh, uh, he did was paid, but uh, not to what we one would expect to yeah so the enigma behind uh, 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 Vincent Lake's work and I've been discussing this matter with uh, uh, 
Mr. Ashish Pitti, is that the original lithograph, the, the, the lithograph uh, of uh, Bird Speculate in Sri Lanka, which is in uh, the uh, uh, American Museum, uh, the, the illustration on the left is of the original uh, bird peculiar to Sri Lanka and the one on the right is the uh, 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 history of birds of Ceylon by Lay. So I'm going to show a few and, and if you see the illustration of the Legs Hawk Eagle on the left, uh, very appropriately named after him later on by Rasmussen and the bird on the right which is, is illustrated by Kuleman. Uh, uh, these, these images were sent to me by uh, uh, Mrs. Cathy Dan Donahue, who worked at the museum and who uh, was notified of the availability of this lithograph. And uh, she uh, had uh, proposed to her director to buy, uh, purchase it, and, and it is there now. And, and uh, that's how I, I managed to get it because I, I led a tour with her, I led a tour for her and her husband who is also entomologist and a top birder uh, in, uh, in the Andaman Islands. That was a fantastic birding trip I did near the Andaman Islands. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. So this is of, of, of the crested hawk eagle on the left. Uh, and the, 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 the artist is still unknown. That's what I couldn't tell you in the previous. Uh, the, so it was the precursor. And we, I have studied to, to the very extremes and, and uh, we, I see some femininity in it and lack of real professionalism in it uh, when it comes to uh, illustrating. And uh, whereas in, on the bird on the right uh, is uh, in its form is almost perfect. Uh, so that's that's the the professional acumen which um, uh, Kuleman had. So we still don't know as to who did the illustrations. These illustrations on the left. So I sent uh, some of these uh, pictures to some of my other friends and uh, even Kathy Donner who had sent these illustrations to uh, Kuleman's son and he also had uh, said that it was not Kuleman's original work. So probably there was someone in Sri Lanka and uh, uh, who, uh, uh, who we don't know. Uh, I was given a lead by uh, Mr. Pitti uh, 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 very generously and I'm pursuing that lead I, per, I have pursued uh, pursue that lead before, but I just dropped it on the way because, you know, going back into history is pretty difficult because you, you bump into um, uh, hard walls and rocks and, you know, stumble uh, into bushes and stuff like that. So it's, it's a very difficult artist journey, you know, going back in history. So this is another, another uh, illustration on the left. And the one on the right is by Kuleman, and we do, still don't know. You can see how different it, how different it is, you know. But uh, uh, the, the interesting stories, as I say, this enigma has to be, we don't know. Uh, so what I think is that Kuleman, did, since he didn't travel elsewhere, uh, from what I know, he only, he just, consistently worked at the British Museum and uh, he to give him a perspective of the bird's posture the general just the general impression shape and size he needed a uh, 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 illustration so uh, we think that is the reason behind these illustrations uh, so Mr. when I spoke about uh, uh, sent these illustrations, these this, uh, slides to Mr. Ashish PD. He said, he gave me some leads. I, I tell you, uh, in one place, uh, Henry, uh, sorry, sorry, Leg says that the artist would have, uh, uh, artist was bad and 
it would have been better if Chas did the illustrations to one of his illustrations, I can remember, uh, because he, he goes on to say that the jumbo fruit was not properly uh, painted and looked like more of a, a fig found in Europe. So that's the kind of, he, he was more, uh, Lake was more a critic uh, of his, uh, the artist who did the hardest of the work for his book. Uh, this is another one of the wood owl and the bay owl. Uh, the one on the left, you see uh, that it's not really right. So that illustration had to be taken over by uh, Kuhlerman and modified. And we hardly would see a bay owl in, with this kind of posture. In it out in the field, so so the uh, but if you look at the brown wood owl too, there the, the symmetry what we see in the field is is not there. There, it, there is uh, something is lacking there. But so this is how the the progression took uh, place from Sri Lanka to the museum and from the museum specimens with the details and the symmetry came into place. Uh, was put into place by Kuhlerman. Yeah, this is the red back flame back, which is now an Indian. Uh, 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 sorry, this is the the crimson back flame back, which is uh, was initially uh, lumped with uh, the greater flame back, but uh, split by Rasmussen. Once again, super illustration on the right. Uh, if you look at the left, you, know, you see certain lots of subtle very differences which in, in general uh, impression shape and size which we refer to as J's. Uh, once again if you look here you if you, you, you see there is a feminine touch to the uh, the barbet on top the the, the brown headed barbet you know and uh, so, so I, I always felt that it was a woman who painted and not a, 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 a male. Uh, so, so that's uh, my uh, inclination toward, uh, towards uh, thinking that it is a female British, obviously a British, who did these paintings. This is the red face Malkoha. Once again, uh, a fantastic job done by uh, Kuhlerman, uh, whereas if you see the one on the left, uh, it's there, not, but not right. Same with this painting of the crimson fronted barber. Yeah, now over here, what is interesting is some of those plates from the original lithograph was not taken over, uh, uh, not uh, taken over uh, by leg for his uh, 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 opus magnus and, and that's that's uh, only one bird was uh, uh, taken here yeah you see the one the painting on the left that one uh, was also not used by leg same over here if you look at legs book uh, which was uh, republished some time ago, uh, I think in the 80s, by Tisera Prakasika. That's what we have because the original volumes are so expensive, we hardly can afford to buy those uh, original legs. Uh, so I'm sure most of us as well uh, familiar with the book would know that this uh, the illustration on the left is not there. So this, this is, I, I don't want to go on, 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 on this, but this is very, very important. So, so I get back uh, to the modern era where, uh, uh, I wouldn't say modern era, but uh, the 1920s uh, when, when uh, uh, Philip used uh, Cecil Lushington. And interestingly, Cecil uh, are, are subspecies of the, of the, broad bill roller subspecies is Siciliae and named after Cecil Lushington by Derniaga. So these are some of the paintings uh, Cecil Lushington did. 
chestnut back down, uh, uh, chestnut hit a bead and the green bead. Uh, so now I would come to Jim Henry, probably a mentor of many Sri Lankan artists. And I, I remember uh, going over and over and over his illustration and copying them and drawing them as a kid. And uh, that was the only book we had as a kids to study our birds and we, uh, several of us would, uh, 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 use the same book. And, uh, I didn't have a book. I had the binoculars and my friend Gihan D.S. Vijaratna, uh, had the book, but he didn't have the binoculars. So we, uh, we got to, uh, we, we did a lot of bird watching as kids and we still are friends and we still do our bird watching together. So this is uh, Bruce Henry and uh, uh, Jim. And uh, uh, this is Jim, I think it's somewhere in Africa and Bruce and uh, uh, his other son who passed away of malaria in Africa. He, he, some believe that he was a better artist than the father, but uh, he was he was more into falconry and uh, very very interesting character. He, was, he also did uh, 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 sort of uh, meet up with quite a few uh, top falconers, and he learned a little bit of uh, quite a bit from his father about bird illustrating. And also one of the British pioneers, uh, George C. Lodge, was one of his tutors in his, uh, at, during his uh, uh, beginning. Now, so this is, these are some of the sketches uh, which I managed to get uh, myself and Gihan. We together got some of uh, Henry's uh, sketches. So this is, this, he was a better, uh, more uh, illustrator, uh, also an artist. So what I'm trying to say is that illustrating go and artistry both have to be on par. And so the, he was also, uh, Jim Henry was also a top field birder and took notes wherever he went. And these are in my collect, personal collection. Uh, he took, uh, uh, lots of notes of the birds while the, and that's how we learned I, I learned my my skills painting in, uh, in the uh, and sketching in the field which is a very very important aspect and that's akin with almost all all uh, wildlife artists yeah this is a, of a museum specimen of a of a trogon with uh, which uh, uh, on the right hand side and a uh, Mar Marsh Harry on the left by uh, Jim Henry. And uh, yeah, yeah, this is also in my collection on the stilt on the left. And this is the stilt on his, uh, in his uh, book, uh, uh, Guide to the Birds of Ceylon. Another, another one of those. Yeah, I'm happy that I have these in my collection and this sort of, you know, gold to me. Yeah, so this is, these are the GM Henry plates, uh, which came out and this shows his artistry uh, along with the, 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 the illustrating scales. Yeah, the, the scaly thrush. I, I wonder whether it will get split again. Uh, it's lumped now by uh, uh, the, the new uh, illustrated uh, checklist to the birds of the world. Uh, uh, there is a lot of taxonomic issues which are debatable, contentious. Uh, yeah, the Sri Lanka wobble on the left and the uh, brown cap babble on the right the red face malkoha on the left and Ceylon, uh, sri lanka simita babble on the right now you see that how how precise uh, uh, when it comes to facial features uh, 
with GM Henry and then uh, if you look at Kulam and you see, uh, you see the differences with those uh, the, the, because that's a very unique uh, thing and here there is a bit of an error I would say but that is because not because of anything that is because he's he's more more he's more an artist here than an illustrator because you'll see it in in the field guide he, it's different yeah these are the other uh, the enemies the the, the the orange bill babble and the, the uh, Sri Lanka wood shrine yeah these are the plates Henry's plates so you see the, the the dexterity of him in how he used the colors and uh, and the the, the uh, gist is perfect here so that's how, that's how it has evolved uh, to a different level from then because here he's trying to give an artistic perspective to the painting while giving uh, the general the, the gist of the bird so that it helps to identify so so this is the progress of uh, uh, the bird illustration and guides so this, this these are the, the uh, from um, from uh, John Harrison's uh, 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 guided birds of Sri Lanka by and the illustrations are by Tim Walkford, which is a fantastic uh, artist I mentioned before. Yeah, these are the turns and the owls on the right. Uh, this is from the, the Birds of India subcontinent by uh, Richard Grimmett and the Inskips. Yeah, these are the, uh, I couldn't remember who uh, illustrated days. So, I mean, the, the tons of you know artists and illustrators. Uh, so they are in a totally different uh, uh, league uh, uh, of their own. So there are some some birders, uh, 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 bird artists who would stick to illustrating and a little bit of art uh, painting, whereas the others would be more painters and less into illustrating uh, books so having said that you know the uh, the progress of uh, bird uh, uh, guides the dire direction which i see personally is uh, evolving into a different realm now uh, because in the future we will see uh, more photographic guides uh, one of the best books which came recent, I couldn't remember the author, the, the, the author but uh, it's uh, uh, Bush Warb uh, Reed and Bush Warblers of the World. And there's the illustrated part of it, and, and then there's the photographic part of it uh, with the text. So in the future, there'll be more photographic guides which will come out, and eventually there will be apps. So. I think they, I hope it, there wouldn't be an end to bird illustrating in art and uh, 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 books with illustration, bird guides with illustrations, uh, but uh, it will be there for a while, but with, when you look at the apps and the sites and uh, I think uh, uh, we, there is a, that, that era is, it, is at, it, at, a, at the tail end to me. So. Uh, I think in 20 years, I wonder whether there would be books. So it's a sad story. I think uh, uh, Mr. Ashish Pitti, who is a very erudite person, uh, spoke of this, of the importance of, you know, field birding, uh, illustrating in the field and that kind of thing in one of his talks on Delhi Bird. So I think time's up for me to end this. So. I've spoken because there's so much more to talk about, but I had to, you know, confine it to uh, one hour. In addition to that, uh, foreign uh, illustrators or artists, is there any like uh, Sri Lankan uh, who has some? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, there were quite a, uh, a few, 
uh, I remember there was one Mr. Ranasinghe at the zoological gardens who did a few, few. I, I think Samantha might remember, he, he worked at the National Zoological Gardens. Atlas. He did a big, few illustrations. I think he was related to Karu Ankar P.B. Karuna Ratna, who was one of the uh, uh, godfathers of Sri Lankan wildlife and uh, it was, he was a walking encyclopedia. Then apart from that, I mean, if you go back in history, it's, uh, it's uh, Haramani Dialvi Seniviratna, who, who did a lot of work during the British time on the botanical side of things. And he did some also uh, sea urchins, if I write, I'm right, some, some, uh, some uh, invertebrates. And then his son, uh, uh, Henry, if I'm right, I think he did some illustrating work. But I, there's, uh, apart from uh, Haramani's and uh, Henry, if I'm right, I'm, I'm not very clear about that. Uh, I, I don't think ever it went into into ever into large uh, uh, form uh, printing or you know publication, not in at least in the recent past. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lester. I am Lienige, the Lienige Secretary for LNC. I yes. just want a small clarification from you. Uh, this, uh, so for this sketching of these birds uh, for uh, to do a painting or art, uh, my, my what I am thinking is even for a photograph, these birds won't stay for a long time. Only few seconds they stay. How do you manage to sketch them? In one day you can do it, or you follow them several days and do the sketching. Uh, very, very good question. So this is what I, I uh, try to tell people, you know, when we started initially, uh, I started going to the zoo, zoo uh, Samatha knows that I would stay at a cage and watch these animals and birds for a long time. And then I would sketch there, then go refer uh, whatever book I had. Uh, but I would say now there's enough tools, you know, there's so much uh, learning uh, material to learn from on YouTube uh, forms of, you know, uh, you, you have to form your own, uh, own uh, form of painting but the, the, or, 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 or illustrating. So what is very, the most important thing is to link yourself with the bird or the beast or even insects, you know, it doesn't have to be with birds. It's, any form you know even if it's flowers you stay with the flower not not a photograph you got to be in the field because you got to have that link you have to have the feel and then it's much easier to give that feel to your work and i keep on telling this to everyone so we know in the field you know camera is good it's a, it's a very important tool it, it's becoming possibly the most important tool in the next decade or so and it will be it you know but uh, I'll never forget, you know, when uh, my first illustrations in the field, you know, goes back to 1978 or something. Those are real things which I st stood in the stayed in the field, Andrew. And and I when I look at them now, you know, and my notebooks, you know, it gives a different feeling. And and I'm sure if if you if you stay stay with them, you take a take a few photographs. Look, keep looking at the animal. The more you look, keep on looking at the animal. You learn more about the animal because otherwise you're confined to a camera and you go home and you just look at the camera. You have no feel whatsoever for for nature, and that's what we conservationists are, uh, are uh, and uh, enthusiasts should do. I think you know, uh, and. To me, I would suggest to everyone who's watching this, whoever is interested, to carry your pencil, eraser, uh, and notebook, which are the possibly the most important tools. And not to carry a field guide to the field. You rather, if you don't I did, uh, know the bird, take take notes of it, and then use the field uh, the the guide at home to identify. Then your learning curve it's much. Uh, you learn much faster and uh, the progress is much better and and uh, uh, that's that sorry yeah that that's where i should stop here thank you very much uh, mr lester for that advice that is thank you very you're much. welcome you're welcome that's what we are here to do samantha <laughs> uh, also used to tell me things to do i remember when i used to be around these cages long ago as a kid yeah yeah, what we normally do, we take the guide to the field and then try to compare. That's the 
Yeah. Yes, no because yeah. yeah, this is the time where where you you miss all the the very fine features. You know, uh, they can be juveniles, they can be adults. You know, it can be a totally different species because the supercilium doesn't go beyond the eye, or there can be a recrial white spot like in the uh, black drongo. Uh, so, so the, the, the lot of little subtle differences, which, which is akin to different groups of birds. So, so once you are in the field and you you take notes, it's very easy. You know, you progress much faster. Uh, otherwise, with a camera, you and, and the field guide in your uh, hand, you're just because uh, it can be a, a rare, rare, extremely rare or a new vagrant to the country. Uh, you're missing because of the subtle variations you do see because you're comparing the field guide. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks.